Hello beautiful souls, thanks for stopping by. Today I wanted to share with you a blog that I wrote recently that I felt the need to turn into an audio. So I hope you join me today in exploring androgyny. I am who I am. My name is Ren. Today I'm sharing a story on gender and sexuality, or at least my side of the story. Today I play with labels only as that. They don't define me. I was born into a female body, given a typical girl name, and thrown out to the world to run from boys, while at the same time being told that they'd never stop chasing me. My grandmother would tell me to walk straight with one foot in front of the other, like a lady, to dress to impress the boys. My family is very contradicting. On one hand, I was raised to fend for myself. I was taught that I needed to be self-dependent and rely on no man, so that when things didn't go as planned, I could kick him out of my house. Sounds like good advice, and partially it was. But in an ever-growing, changing society, I was still raised like a typical girl, even though my mannerisms were far from that. You see, I easily fit under the label of tomboy. If I had been allowed, I may have even cut my hair short, but as a kid, I had long brown hair with gross straight bangs. I was forced into dresses because it's what a lady wears on nice occasions, and it didn't matter whether or not I felt exposed. We don't take into consideration how our children feel. We want them as an image on display for the world to see so we can say, look at my kid, look how well I'm doing. We don't care if their skin is crawling. They're just kids. They'll learn to adapt to this static world. No fuckers, they won't. You're going to damage them and they're going to despise you for it in the end. This world doesn't stick to one century. Everything is in constant motion, but most people don't like that. In elementary school, I felt mostly comfortable with boys playing Yu-Gi-Oh cards and pretending Star Wars at recess. The girls were bright and bubbly, which was not my thing. If memory serves me right, my teacher gave me the award of most tomboyish in fifth grade, or something along those lines. When I did find female friends, they were held close to my heart. Even though I hung out with the boys, we still never clicked. I was a girl hanging out with boys. How gross they must have felt. You could see I obviously didn't fit in with the normal world, which ended up isolating me. I don't mind the solitude, it's become my favorite thing, but I wonder what life could have been like if I was allowed to venture into self-discovery earlier. When I hit high school, I realized I was into girls. Freshman year was a fucking mess, with a million stories strung together. I had two boyfriends, and they never felt right. The side I was on in the relationship, it felt funny. I then dated two girls before jumping into a long-distance relationship with a girl in Cali that lasted a few years. It was during my high school life where I began to find myself. I realized boys were off the table. They made me uncomfortable. Then I had people with such audacity to tell me it was just a phase. I'd fade out of it and become normal again. But no, I love women, always have, but I just didn't realize. And it all began to click, or sort of. I was comfortable with the label lesbian. My family, not so much. My grandmother was still uncomfortable with me being remotely masculine and tried everything in her power to make me a woman. She still is. She would buy me hooped earrings and tell me to wear them, saying how beautiful I'd be to the guys. At the same time, she'd also be telling me to watch out for men because I was going to be raped and murdered. I was hardly allowed to go outside because there were men hiding in the woods. What if I was a boy? I'm sure the story would have been completely different. When I reached college, I had asked my mom to cut my hair short. She's a hairdresser. And I remember her asking me, are you sure you want to be a butch? (laughs) My mom had a really hard time accepting me too, but I have to give it to her. Out of all the people in my family, she is the one who accepts me the most now because we put each other through honest hell. I think my mom knew I was gay growing up and that scared her. She saw all the things I liked and was afraid of, of what? Of looking bad in front of the family, the world? 
You might call me crazy, but my grandmother offered me a thousand dollars to grow my hair out and color it blonde. She still offers it to me, and I decline it every time. I will never sell myself to look appealing for someone else. I don't give a damn if you offer me all the riches in the world. You cannot change who I am. How can you expect someone to be happy in a skin that they don't feel comfortable in? <laughs> and another roadblock we've hit. This skin. Who am I? Yeah, I love women, but is that because I feel more masculine? That in itself feels like stereotypes, and after all these years, I've finally been able to pinpoint it. You love who you love, not based on your gender, chosen or given. You love who you feel comfortable around. Simple as that. And it took so long to love myself because I didn't know who I was. I was in a female body feeling what the world labeled as masculine, but I also didn't feel like I had to become a man. I didn't like being a girl either. Then I asked myself, why can we not be all? Didn't we all start as one? And I'm not talking philosophically, I mean biologically. The male was a mutation, if I remember. What if the universe is trying to merge again? What if I'm not woman or man, but both and none at the same time? Perhaps gender fluid, androgynous, non-binary? Those are lovely words that make my soul dance. Still labels, but ones I feel comfortable with. I feel like I can't be placed in either a man or woman's shoes. My foot doesn't fit in that world. For me, realizing I am everything helps me spiritually. The source that we all come from is everything and nothing. It cannot be defined just as I cannot be defined. And that mystery is fluid like the deep ocean. And with that fluidity, I realized I didn't even like the label lesbian and begin to prefer something along the lines of pansexual lesbian. This, for me at least, means that I have attractions to everyone regardless of how you label yourself, but I feel most comfortable with women. I see the divine beauty in everyone, but that doesn't mean I'm going to fall in love with you or even want to sleep with you. It just doesn't work that way. I know this has been a winding ramble, but I want the world to know where we are. I stand with those who perhaps don't even know where they stand. I offer you firm ground if you need it. The world is changing and we must adapt. If not, we are going to be left behind. The only constant in this universe is change, which means we have to accept it. Let people be who they want to be. It's not about your comfort, it's about theirs. And the moment you allow everyone to feel comfortable is the moment we can all join hands and see how uniquely perfect we all are. Like stained glass, we hold different shades to form an even, even grander picture. We go by many names, ever-changing like the waves. <laughs>